This is Major William Anders, United States Air Force, NASA astronaut. Born in the Crown Colony of Hong Kong, the son of a Navy commander, he lived the life of a military family. It was natural for him to go to the Naval Academy. Upon graduation, he decided on a flying career and received his commission in the Air Force. When he entered the astronaut program, he had already earned his master's degree in nuclear engineering. With the rest of the third group of astronauts, he began the training program with an intensive course of academics. Geology field trips supplemented the classroom study in this science, a portion of the training necessary to meaningful exploration of the moon. Bill Anders and his wife, Valerie, live with their four children in El Lago, near the Manned Spacecraft Center between Houston and Galveston, Texas. Active in community life with a strong sense of civic responsibility, Anders is secretary-treasurer of the Property Owners Association. A daily workout keeps him in condition necessary to fulfill the often strenuous physical requirements of his job. but free time is very rare for an astronaut. received his first crew assignment as backup pilot for the Gemini 11 mission. He trained with prime crew member Richard Gordon for extravehicular activity and the other activities of the mission, ready to step in if needed. When Gemini 11 lifted off, Anders manned a console at launch control. His next flight assignment was as a primary crew member for the third manned Apollo flight with his fellow astronauts, Frank Borman and Michael Collins. This was to be the second manned flight on the Saturn V moon rocket and the second manned flight in Earth orbit of the lunar module, the vehicle which two astronauts will land on the moon. When the lunar module was sent into orbit in January of 1968 for its first unmanned test flight, Anders was a very intense observer in Houston's mission control center for this flight meant a lot to him. In his own words, the limb, I think, is like a big uh, line of dominoes, every one of which uh, has an effect upon the uh, one it's associated with. And nothing uh, can occur in one that doesn't somehow affect the others or the total uh, mission. The first flight of the lunar module was a success. Now it was back to training. And this meant meetings, mission reviews, planning sessions, briefings. This is perhaps the least glamorous but most time consuming part of getting ready for a space flight. Then the unexpected. Command module pilot Michael Collins underwent surgery. While it was minor, it meant that he was off the flight and his backup, James Lovell, stepped in, just as Bill Anders was ready to do for Richard Gordon on Gemini 11. And something new was added. Their mission was changed to be the second manned flight of Apollo and the first crew to ride the Saturn V. The lunar module was no longer on, but a flight around the moon was. The unqualified success of the first manned flight of Apollo 7 made this possible. Bill Anders, Frank Borman, and Jim Lovell now have the chance to be the first men to leave the Earth and orbit another world. They will achieve a place in history. Bill Anders will meet it with humor, enthusiasm, and a sense of responsibility that marks him as a United States astronaut. Thank you.